the first one I'll start with is our Small Business Scholarship. Uh, and this is a program that really essentially provides a scholarship for membership to the business partnership, a free membership in year one. Uh, and if certain kind of program requirements are met, then you get a, a half price membership the second year. Uh, and it's really, you know, an effort to, to be more inclusive, uh, to, to engage those who aren't uh, typically member, uh, members of our organization and really bring them in and help get them connected to resources. Year one of the program, we've got 15 uh, enrolled so far. Um, and thanks to Hills Bank sponsoring the program, we're gonna be able to take 15 more. A second highlight from the year, I would say, is uh, a couple of the new programs that we were able to launch this year. One of those being our executive leadership program, ELP. It's really for C-suite leaders and, and helping them to uh, engage in the challenges that they, they need to these days. And our, we're partnering with the Tippy College of Business on that. They're fantastic partners. And so this past, we had the first cohort this past year. We graduated 19 folks from that. We've got 22 signed up for the next cohort. Kind of a side effect is just the way it's connecting leaders across the, the community. The third big highlight, um, I would say, is uh, and this is a big one, uh, is workforce. Um, we heard a lot from our businesses over the past couple of years, what's, what's the greatest challenge workforce? An example of some of the short-term things that, that we did is you know, develop a, a workforce uh, resources guide uh, for businesses to use to, to help you know, with those challenges within their organizations. Uh, and then in terms of the long-term uh, approach, one of, the, one of the big things we've been working on for a long time, even pre-pandemic times, is the childcare. You know, figuring out how to increase the amount of, you know, the quantity, the quality, and the affordability of childcare. So when I think about 2022, it's really hard to pick a few of the highlights, but some that jump out to me are Builders and Backers. That, that program and the, the amount of response that we've had at the community level, the opportunity that it's created for a number of folks that traditionally potentially had not connected to these resources, and what it's done as another addition to the entrepreneurial ecosystem is tremendous. And a lot of that credit goes to Liz and a number of the partners that have been involved to make that happen. Another thing that I'm particularly excited about from 22 that has already had a, an immediate impact has been the hiring of Sarah Thompson to focus on our rural economic development. She has immediately hit the ground running. She brings a wealth of knowledge and expertise and a tremendous energy to this work, and she's already invigorated communities like Lone Tree and Swisher and a lot more to come. Another element of, of our work that's exciting and, and we've made big strides in in 22 was the Iowa EdTech Collaborative. And really it's a vision to reimagine the education technology sector and create a space that attracts and develops and grows the next generation of solutions providers for education and education technology. And so Mark Butland and a number of others have been hard at it, uh, trying to develop and refine different initiatives initiatives from Classroom of the Future as a way to test and pilot and introduce students to new technologies to the Iowa Quality Seal of Approval, which creates a validation or an efficacy pathway for these emerging technologies. We've got a legacy in this space, one that we want to continue to build upon and grow for years to come. As far as highlights for 2022 go, certainly the hosting of the recent UWW Freestyle and Women's Wrestling World Cup is top of mind. Our community welcomed 19 nations for the better part of two weeks. And whether you are from Kyrgyzstan, China, Iran, Georgia, Azerbaijan, or even Ukraine, you walked away with an unforgettably positive impression of Iowa, and you felt the promise behind the WrestleTown USA brand. The fact that going to World Cup and seeing all of these wonderful nations come to represent themselves and participate in the sport they love, I became hooked. I was absolutely cheering and yelling and screaming. It was amazing to see the athleticism at play. I just really think that when you hear the, word, the term all roads lead to Iowa, never more was it more apparent to me what that means until I went to the World Cup. Other big time highlights for me include the inaugural hosting of the Girl State Wrestling and Volleyball Tournaments, the Boys State Baseball Tournament, Girl State Tennis, and so on and so on. 
and also the continued development of the Bike Iowa City brand and the great work by Liz Hubing. The Core 4 event, Ragbri's ninth return to Johnson County is this year. The continued expansion of our single track and flow tracks by Coralville, Iowa City are all highlights thanks to an incredible local cycling community. Our merger between the business partnership and the Iowa City Area Development Group, um, you know, it's something that has been talked about on and off, you know, for a long time, and this just feels like the right moment for it. Our organizations have been through a lot collectively uh, since the pandemic hit in 2020. Our work is just overlapping um, more and more, and so I couldn't be more excited. You know, we're already have been living together since 2019, so now we're engaged uh, and you'll all be invited to the wedding. And now it just seems like we're finally getting that momentum and I know the team both at ICAD and at the business partnership have put so much time and effort into this. Uh, couldn't be more proud of the people involved. Really trying to join forces, figure out where there's some overlap where both organizations were working on certain projects that now we can be more aligned and push things uh, a little bit further, a little bit faster. And then also just coming up with new ideas and new initiatives. You know, this is a time of change where there's gonna be some new ideas, maybe some new services or things like that yet to be discussed that we can look into and just provide better support for our local businesses and just make Iowa City area a really great place to live, work and, and thrive. So as I think about 2023, the, the one, the big looming opportunity ahead really is what lies uh, ahead for, for the co-creation, the collaboration, the alignment, of Iowa City Area Development and the Iowa City Area Business Partnership. And that's something that I'm the most excited about. And it's our opportunity as we reimagine and redesign our organizations, how do we do it in a way that meets the work where it's at, uses a 2030 lens to help fuel what's going forward and layer that over the voice of our customer and constituents in the room today as well as those that aren't here today and build an organization and a network of organizations ready to meet the needs of today and our future. What excites me most about the merger is the opportunity for the staffs to work together and to actually do more. They truly are better together. We look at over the last two years what what they've been doing and how they've come together through the pandemic and, and offered some additional support to businesses as needed. And they've really stood out as um, being a strong group working together. Just officially doing that, I, I think, um, brings a lot of opportunity to the communities and the businesses that, that we support. Probably the most meaningful highlight was the transition from Project Better Together to Better Together 2030 and the appointment of Katie Gerlach. It's the most meaningful because it's the most important. That is our organization and our peers and all of you supporting, participating, and investing into this plan for our shared future. I'm so pleased and happy to just be one cog in that larger wheel as we approach and plan for 2030. I'm really, really excited to now execute on that vision and have it not just sit on a shelf. And there's a lot of work um, underway already across the five pillars, a lot of great projects and a lot of them that, that connect with each other. Um, and again, we need all hands on deck. We need everybody engaged. So I'm really excited to grow that engagement. One of the things that I feel is most exciting about the Better Together 2030 is really it, it serves as an anchor to bring our entire community together. And I believe that there is something in here for everyone. I think that there's an opportunity, depending on you know, your interests, your passion, your desires, to plug into this work uh, within one of the five pillars, if not more. And really the opportunity I see is bringing us together and getting us all rowing and moving in the right direction. And I look forward to what opportunities lie within this and the ability to engage the broadest parts of our community, from our business community, to the residents, to our municipalities, and everything in between. All of the um, partnerships that we're looking forward to strengthening and continuing to build on those relationships that we already have so that we can, you know, work together to uh, see this community continue to grow in economic strength, but also in diversity and also in just fun. I mean, there are just so many things that we are planning together to be able to help this community grow and thrive as uh, a major part of Iowa. Mm -hmm.